after 19 off the bench in their first game of the year. Mike Krzyzewski, in his 11th year, he's won 233 games at the helm of the Blue Devils and four times in the final four in the last five years, including three consecutive. Todd Day, the man, will focus in for the Razorbacks. Honorable mention All-America a year ago. He's leading them at 21 points a game so far. He can do it to you in many different ways. And the man who's his boss, Nolan Richardson, in his sixth year, he is now called the most popular man in the state of Arkansas. Took his team to the final four a year ago before falling to two. He talks about coming back to play these guys again. The Razorbacks want a little revenge here tonight. We've already played this team. You the teams that you have lost to, you don't have to motivate them. They already know. Uh, I think the key that I will always talk about is that the most important key in basketball or in any other thing is to play hard. Uh, if you can't play hard, you can't win. Playing hard is a trademark of both of these coaches. Nothing unusual there, Dick. Well, he's a master communicator. Nolan Richardson's done an amazing job. He had a battle of adversity in his first two years, but he has it rolling now, and I look for Arkansas's program to be one of the real dominant programs in the 90s. Yeah, rolling with Nolan is a big uh, theme back in that part of the country. In fact, a lot of Arkansas fans, because of their troubles during football, can't wait for more basketball to come their way. Well, they're having a real tough time in football. Frank Broyles, certainly the legendary coach at Arkansas, the athletic director, is here today, and he said, hey, basketball is great medicine right now for our athletic program. Billy McCaffrey had possession, and there's a good defensive play by Ron Urey to knock it out of bounds. Duke will set up offensively. First thing I want to really clarify right away, Bob, we don't really have what I call a rematch because Duke really is playing without three kids, Abdelnavi, Ricky, and Henderson. But it's certainly an exciting matchup with two of the best 10 teams in America. Hurtley finds a seam, and he goes in to miss the layup. Bobby playing near his jersey home, but not a very good shot there. First time playing at Madison Square Garden for Bob Hurley. Tommy's really excited. Look at Hurley dropping inside. They're going to double up on Oliver Miller on the interior. Leitner behind him, Hurley out in front. Arlen Bowers lobs it down to the big O. Excellent passer. Miller has good passing ability. Mayberry gives it back to Yuri as the Razorbacks work a little clock here. They may not do much of that tonight, though. Miller and Leitner really banging inside. Miller trying to lay that big body. Mayberry, and it's blocked by the freshman Grant Hill. And his father, Calvin Hill, is in the crowd. Got to like that play early in the game. Well, that's the Velvet Man. He's smooth. He's silky smooth. Certainly one of the dominant freshman players in the nation. It comes in to Oliver Miller. Leitner on him. Early sagging down. As big as Miller is, he's more a finesse kind of post player instead of a power player. Christian Leitner reached in as he completed his dribble, and that'll be his first foul. And Bob, the reason I say that is if you look at his numbers, he's only attempted three free throws in the first two games. The big power guy, Mr. Miller, I really believe he plays a little bit like a finesse center because he has that good touch. Looks like they got Hurley sagging in from the weak side to help out, and he got the foul reaching in. Duke's going to do a job of what we call doubling up down on a post and forcing Oliver Miller to relocate, to find the open man. Relocate an open man with the double team on him. He's got a world of potential, this big guy. He can block shots, he can rebound. He's got long arms, which makes him even bigger than 6'9". He has two points, averaging 19, and Arkansas has the first points of the game. A minute in. Arlen Bowers watching Hurley out on top. That's a good matchup of quick little guys. Well, Bowers is really an outstanding defensive player. He told me tonight, Dick, I want to make you an all-Rambo team. One of the best defensive players in the nation. Here's Leitner with a shot fake and then a dribble, and Oliver Miller reaching on him. See, that's the silly foul. Miller can't afford those fouls. Last year, he had a tendency to get into foul trouble, but they have ample help off the bench with a guy by the name of Isaiah Morris and Roosevelt Wallace, two big, strong players. Hurley for Thomas Hill. And Greg, or rather, a Grand Hill, who can play the point when Hurley's out of the game, and sometimes he'll switch out there when Hurley's in the ball game. Leitner with the turnaround. Leitner with the excellent touch down on the box inside. Little turnaround jump shot, mid-post area. Miller really leaning inside. Hurley trying to double up. Now watch Hurley's double up inside. Now he'll try to relocate. Miller somehow gets the dribble and the jumper. Well, he's only missed three shots thus far this year. He's 19 to 22 coming into this game. He's shooting up in the upper 80 percentage. There's Leitner from Hurley. May have traveled. 
Good job of hedging right there by Oliver Miller. Hedging simply means step out, gives a little help, and he forces the walk on Christian Leitner. You would expect turnovers to be a part of this ball game tonight. Yuri left side, Todd Day almost threw an air ball, but there is Mayberry for an uncontested follow. Lee Mayberry and Todd Day played for Mike Krzyzewski this summer, so he's very familiar with their skills. Razorbacks by four, two minutes, 15 seconds in. I like the way Bowers plays defense. There's McCaffrey being played by Mayberry, but they have Bowers on Hurley. Leitner beats Miller and draws the foul. That's the second one on the big fella, so again, here it is, early foul trouble. He's got to go to his bench and get Miller out of there. Leitner getting the good angle on the inside. The entry down inside. See, now he's got the good angle to the baseline. There is no way Miller can get a piece of that ball without laying his body on Leitner. Isaiah Morris will come in early in the ballgame as Miller takes his seat with those two fouls. He's IBM. Isaiah Butch Morris, the IBM man from out of San Jacinto, as we look at one of the premier free throw shooters last year in America, Christian Leitner. Got 84%. I got to kick what uh, Scott Edgar, the Arkansas assistant, said about San Jack Community College. He said, that, hey, that's a four-year experience that you get in two years. It's a four-year college, even though it's junior college. Ronnie Arrow now coaching at South Alabama, had such success there. Well, he had David Butler and Moses Scurry, who played at UNLV. Outstanding program. So with Miller out of there, we'll see how the Razorbacks operate offensively. You look for Mayberry and Day to do a little more now. Taffy working hard against Mayberry. Offensive foul. Bobby Hurley thought it was on him. He voiced his displeasure to the official who then signaled offensive foul. Hey, Bobby Hurley's going to make my old Bill Lambeer team. A whiner and a moaner and a groaner. I mean, come on, Bobby. He got away with it. I'd say he's got that look like he whines a lot on the court. He's a competitor, though. A fierce competitor. Out of Jersey City, family in attendance. He brings it up the court with McCaffrey with him, and Arkansas is going to do a little half-court traffic here. Bob Hurley does a good job reading the defense. The defense was going to rotate into a half-court trap. So he wants to look for the diagonal pass against this trap. Hurley driving, kicks it for Grant Hill. Leitner, offensive rebound. Fakes and scores. Boy, he utilizes his pivot move exceptionally well. He plants that pivot foot and has that excellent extension. Leitner six, Arkansas six. Where's Todd Day? He's been disappearing in action. Can't find Todd Day. He took that jumper from the left side and almost missed the iron. That's all we've heard from him offensively. He usually likes the game with the big lights and the party on. There's Morris with a three off the bench. Very flexible player. As you can see, he has range as a shooter. He's one of the top ten junior college players in America. They're going to go into a trap right now. Todd Day at the point of that trap, inviting him to a wing. But then Hurley's quickness gets him around Morris. He has the excellent ability to dribble through traps. See, there's the diagonal right over the top of the defense. Thomas Hill. Excellent look. Great finish by Bob Hurley. That's the best pass against a half-court trap, the diagonal pass. Arkansas with that three-pointer last time down the floor, leading by one, almost a turnover. Bowers the jumper. Rebound, Grant Hill. He gets by two men. Give it back to him. Give it back to him. McCaffrey scores. McCaffrey says, no, my mom is sitting here. My papa, I got to score. He had to lay up for Mr. Hill if he would have hit the trailer. Blue doubles by a point now. Morris double teamed as Hurley helps out. And a reach in foul by Bobby Hurley, his second. With Oliver Miller on the sideline, the Mayday team has to really take control now. Todd Day and Lee Mayberry. And we've got the quick start in the NIT that we expected. Bob Hurley does an excellent job reading the trap. See the trap coming over now with Day? They're going to get him in a trap. Now he's going to get around the trap, and now he's going to utilize. We're going to see him come back for the ball. He replaces himself, and now there's the diagonal pass right over the top of the defense, and Thomas Hill converts and scores. Bobby Hurley just ahead of Kenny Anderson's assist mark a year ago. Anderson at 285 at Georgia Tech. It was a Duke single season record, the best in a second best in ACC history. And Bobby Hurley is off to a good start tonight. Even though he has not scored, he contributes in a lot of different ways. You mentioned Kenny Anderson. He's all world. He belongs in another league. Razorbacks with no subs during the timeout. Here's Todd Day, invisible so far. Bowers scrambling, knocks it over the baseline. 
Todd Day not looking at the basket when he catches the rock. He's not squaring looking at the goal and getting himself in position to shoot the ball. Now here comes the Ar Arkansas pressure defense. And we're also looking at point guard Grant Hill now. Bobby Hurley with those two fouls is out. And Brian Davis, a defensive specialist, in to replace him. Duke will lose some ball handling here, but Grant Hill is a very good athlete. And there's Davis missing. Leitner, eight points for him. Christian Leitner really playing excellent on the baseline. Strong offensive rebound. He gets the rebounding lane. With a couple of free throws, he's also three for three. There's a rebound by Davis. Did he push off to get it? He shoved to Todd Day out of the picture. Ryan Davis is on the court to be their defensive stopper. They think he has a lot of similarities to Billy King in terms of Billy King's great defensive ability when he played at Duke. He started the season, but he went one for seven, had one rebound, and Mike Krzyzewski at a team meeting, we were there, said, Mr. Davis, that is unacceptable in a Duke uniform, a performance like that. Razorbacks trying to stop a 10-3 Blue Devil run here. Duke went to a man-to-man -man on that inbounds play. A lot of teams zone it up, but not Coach K. Here's Mayberry. See, if they can keep him in a half-quarter offensive set like this, Duke really has the advantage because Arkansas is a better transition team. Look at Le Davis out in the break. From Leitner and Todd Day, coast-to-coast coast with the block. Todd Day with a little MC hammer, baby. You can't touch this. Don't take this to the goal on me. Hey, T.D., Todd Day, here goes Davis, he smells the jam, he thinks it's jam sitting in a big apple, but Day says, no, baby, you can't touch me, I'm a little MC Hammer man, I'm Mr. Versatility, I can dance, I can sing, and I can play hoops. Thomas Hill leads for Duke, senior Greg Kubek is in with the ball, right side McCaffrey. So you don't think I'm up on all that MC Hammer stuff? I'm right waiting, right I'm waiting for your Millie Vanilli team to come out. I'm talking about my off team right now. <laughs> Here's Leitner, right side, Grant Hill, yes. What a pass by Leitner. Great vision, has the size from the perimeter up on top. He throws that over the head pass a la West Unso style. Todd Day with a three. He was long with his first field goal attempt, short with that one. Arkansas shooting too quickly in their half court set. And Duke doing an excellent job defensively in transition. Devils by five as Hill takes it up and misses Day. And here's Mayberry running. Notice how Duke gets back to try to reduce the number game. Not allow Arkansas to get the three on twos, four on threes. Swarming defense forces the Isaiah Morris turnover. Hill, Leitner, and he's into double figures already. And he's an emotional player right here, running the break. And the Razorbacks run a timeout. Down by seven. Six and a half minutes into the first half of the NIT semis. Watch Grant Hill penetrate right here and get the ball in the center of the court where he has three basic options. He can drive all the way. Now we're going to see. Freeze it. Right here. Now see the great look. He could throw to his left, throw to his right, or drive. And there's the 45-degree angle cut by Christian Leitner. Great look by the 6'8 velvet man, Mr. Grant Hill. Oh, his daddy Calvin's got to be so excited watching that player. Duke fans have to be excited. Arkansas up to a 6-2 lead, a 14-3 Blue Devil run. They lead by seven. The real key has been the inability of Arkansas to attack the half-court pressure defense of Duke. Leitner out on top against Isaiah Morris. Oliver Miller not in the game for Arkansas. Their offense stalled when he went to the bench with two fouls. Very alert. They're very alert. We're Todd Day and we're Mayberry with their presence on the floor. At all times, they really recognize where both those guys are. Shot clock 10 as Morris lets it go. Kept alive by Day, but... Pulled down by Thomas Hill. Offensive efficiency, shot selection is such a key to a half-court offensive set. Non-existent right now. Nolan Richardson has to be very disappointed with their execution. One field goal in the last five minutes. Here's Thomas Hill to the basket, and it was taken away by Bowers, but the doubles keep it. Kubek spins on the floor and somehow avoids the turnover. If he would have stood up, it would have been a turnover. Excellent defensive play by Bowers. Hurley, and the rebound by Morris, and then a Kubek foul looking for the offensive rebound. There are two major factors really prevailing early in this game. One, Duke is doing an excellent job in defensive transition. I can't remember a layup by Arkansas in their fast break game here tonight. And the second thing they're doing, a great job of helping in their half-court offense, and they're really recognizing, recognizing where Day and Mayberry are at all times. 
Day has been non-existent. He's been really disappearing. 0 for 2 from the floor. He's got to move a little better without the basketball. See, Thomas Hill really checking him, trying to deny him the ball. Mayberry with only two points, so they're two big scorers with only two between them, and Lee Mayberry takes it right at Brian Davis. It'll be number two on Davis. Mayberry's going to have to pick it up right now to provide some offensive score. And the other factor Arkansas does a great job with is their defensive pressure to force the turnover and get layups, and they're not able to do it against the kind of ball handling skills of Bob Hurley. Razorbacks with a couple of upperclassmen into the game. Morris takes a seat. See, Ar Arkansas likes to play the R&R &R game. Rip and run, baby. But do, but they do it under control. They're a well-coached basketball team. Nolan Richardson, his last three years, 21, 25, and 30 wins. He's been brilliant on that sideline down in Fayetteville. Nolan struggled in those first two years. He was 12 and 16, and then he was 19 and 11. He said, 19, baby. Does it make it because he replaced the very popular Eddie Sutton? By the way, Eddie Sutton has one of the Rip Van Winkle teams this year, Oklahoma State. He was left some good personnel by Leonard Hamilton. Mayberry with four on the free throws. And eight minutes in, it's a five-point Duke lead. Lickner with a little ball handling. He wants to go all the way. Kubek got the rebound, stripped by Wallace, and Todd Day is running with it. Give it back to Daish. That was Murray kicking it back, and Todd Day is on the scoreboard. Good two-man play. He's from out of Memphis, Tennessee, one of five guys in this program for Memphis. Day with a near steal. He claims Davis touched it last. The officials will give it to Duke. Day wants to be the zebra man and make the call. He's got all-world ability, Todd Day. There's Nolan Richardson, the only coach right now in college basketball who can claim that he played professional football and professional basketball. He did both. He's the Bo Johnson. Hey, <laughs> Nolan knows. Forget about Bo knows. <laughs> Nolan knows that Duke has played pretty well so far, but his Razorbacks are turning it up a notch. But Mayberry, bounce loose pass, ball, bounce pass. Curry, and it was kicked by Leitner. How do you bounce pass past a 6'11 guy, though? Well, you've got to drive that bounce pass right under his long arms. <laughs> Billy McCaffrey back in for Duke. Ryan Davis will take a seat. Both coaches using a lot of personnel here early. How good is Arkansas? They're only three down, and they have not played well at all. That tells you a little bit about their ability. And Duke has probably played about as well as they can so far. Good pressure there. Thomas Hill teaming up with Grant Hill. Here's Bobby Hurley, who's back in. He tried to force it. Leitner, loose ball. McCaffrey. Wallace gives it up for Leitner and a foul on the Razorbacks as Christian Leitner scrambles for the offensive board. Leitner has really been the dominant force on the baseline. He's been on the offensive boards. He's rebounded well. There's the great team huddle, the concept of Duke. They play so well together, and that's all really geared by their coaching staff. They have an outstanding coaching staff headed by Mike Krzyzewski. Yes, Michael Krzyzewski will make my all Rolls Royce coaching five. King K, the king. Robert Montgomery knights the general. He is now becoming the king. Todd Day stepped on the baseline to intercept the pass. I think, you know, Bob, when you talk about graduating players and winning consistently, two criteria I'm going to utilize and pick in my top five. There's the dump down inside. Grand Hill. Good look, Grand Hill, free. Poor job defensively. Mike shishevsky has got to be right up there with Dean Smith. There's Grand Hill with the reach in foul on the baseline right. Well, the Razorbacks, last four or five times down the floor, Dick, certainly looking more assertive offensively. Arkansas is a very streaky team. They can put the great spurt on you and really hurt you. Just make a call to Billy Tubbs in Oklahoma, and he'll tell you all about that. And I promise tonight not to say that Nolan's never lost to Tubbs. I promise, that, and I'll promise not to say that he beat Tom Pender six times in a row. I promise, Tom, I would not say that. Murray, Wallace, and he blew the layup. Wallace keeps it alive, and with it is Hawkins, who just checked in. He was too hard with it, and Leitner picks it up. By the way, Texas at Arkansas, you'll see it on ESPN in January. Should be a great one in the Southwest Conference, and there's Grand Hill again. Notice how the deep kids run those angles, and the good penetration by Hurley. He gets right in the center where you have three basic options. 
Wallace with the nifty dribble, but he threw a line drive jumper up, and Leitner is controlling the glass. Wallace is a transfer from Virginia Union, a Division II power. He played at AG. Jay English, who's now playing for the Washington Bullets, averaged double figures. Ten seconds away from the halfway mark in the first half. Leitner from Hurley, and Christian Leitner now has 12 points to go with his seven rebounds. Mr. Leitner is a pro. He has great inside-outside ability and an excellent touch. Duke by nine. Todd Day, one for four now. Came off the screen, a little two-man game. Bobby Hurley past Murray, and he forces the foul before the shot. Hurley excited about playing at Madison Square Garden. Played at St. Anthony's in Jersey City. That's right outside. You go across the river, the Lincoln Tunnel. He's going to have Thanksgiving dinner tomorrow at home. He's having the McCaffrey family join him for some big turkey. This is Hurley's going to make it. Just a class act. I'll tell you one thing. He learned all about discipline and competitiveness playing for his dad, Bob Hurley, at St. Anthony's. Well, we got some substituting going on. Leitner gets a breather. Hawkins sits down for Arkansas. And in the game, a good freshman out of fine bluff. Ken Biley, a 6'6 Arkansas Player of the Year last season. Bobby Hurley at the line for Duke. Arkansas, a very deep team, excellent athletes. Last year, remember here, Kansas was the hot club. They had that great start, and Kansas beat LSU early in the NIT. Then they beat UNLV and then won the championship, beating St. John's. And everyone remembers UNLV from that moment on. Just got rolling and won the whole thing, beating Duke in that blowout by 30. Jerry Tarkanian's team put a clinic on a defensive pressure and how to run the transition game. Thomas Hill in, or rather out. Brian Davis, the man in. Here's Mayberry. Can't hit from the middle of the paint. And Crawford Palmer, who comes in to spell Leitner, got the loose ball rebound. Mayberry and Todd Day really have struggled early. Look at the defensive pressure. Great stance. Bowers loves playing defense. You can see it in his intensity. They switch down. He rotates on McCaffrey. Hurley always catches and faces the basket. So he can always watch. He has great vision as to what's happening. That's called the triple threat position. This team is on an 18 to 4 run. Arkansas two field goals in the last eight minutes as McCaffrey got it from a scrambling Hurley. Shot clock down to 10. Grand Hill got it away from Biley. Can't get the shooters rolling. The Razorbacks outlet to Mayberry. But Duke really getting back well. Doing an excellent job. Defensive transition. Eliminating the layup. Eliminating the three on two. McCaffrey not quick enough to avoid the foul. That's one of the most important areas in coaching. The ability to try and get your team to understand the immediate need to find the basketball, stop the ball, and to recover into the three-second area and then flare out and find your people. Larry, Larry Lembo, the official signal is one and one. At the line is Ken Biley. Arkansas. Southwest Conference for the last year. They should before going to the Southeastern Conference. Texas should have a good basketball. Good player for Texas. Mayberry is out. Ron Urey, 31, the veteran you saw come in. There's Mayberry with only four points so far, two of them on free throws. He hasn't really demonstrated his great ability in terms of penetration and his ability to score as well. Miley the freshman now, tickles the twine. He has a couple, and it's a nine-point game. Duke leading 24-15. First look, half. Look at Bowers will play defense. Drive him, beat him, and turn him. Take him to a spot. See, he's trying to take him to a spot and then beat him to that spot. Davis from Hurley. It hit nothing but the glass. Grant Hill, offensive rebound. He stepped on the baseline. I think if we were charting this game, we were running a chart in terms of transition baskets by Arkansas, you would find that they had maybe two at the most. The Bowers now the handler on the perimeter. Just to be exact, each team with only three turnovers so far in an up-tempo game. Bowers inside, twisting and scoring is Isaiah Morris. He has five, one of them a three-pointer, and then that bank shot. He's going to give him a lot of QT, a lot of quality time. He's the transfer from San Jacinto, good inside player. Hurley penetrates, kicks it inside, easy basket, Brian Davis. What an excellent job of driving to the goal without the basketball and recognizing the opening man, Hurley. Todd Day, his second field goal, and it is up and down now. Where have you been, TD? Todd Day. 
Super ability. Played on the World Championship Games team. Coached by Mike Krzyzewski. Coming off the 27-point outing against the Sooners. Here's McCaffrey. And he McCaffrey. gets the two. Lee McCaffrey does an excellent job shooting the perimeter shot. Struggled last year, but now he's getting PT playing time. And he's very comfortable on the floor. Day again. Kept alive by Yuri and then followed by Morris. And he's the man for Nolan Richardson now. Seven points off the bench. IBM really contributing. We have a timeout on the floor. Some substitutions being made here. And with 7-12 to go, Duke by seven. doubleheader tonight in the Dodge NIT. We've got 7-12 to go. First half, Duke off to a quick start. Arkansas hanging around within seven despite their problems so far. The story from Madison Square Garden so far is a question of good Duke shooting and a little bit of foul trouble for the Razorbacks. Duke is up over 50 percent. Oliver Miller has four points, but the big stat with him, two fouls. Hasn't played in a while. We talked about that at the top of the show, how we thought the interesting matchup of Leitner and Miller would come down to foul situations. And Miller got into foul trouble immediately, something he did last year. That goes to half-court trap right now. They're going to go into a 1-3-1 one, one trap. 2-1-2 two, two set against it, always trying to look for the diagonal pass. They're using Clyde Fletcher at 6-6 six, six, out on top for some wingspan, and he gets the loose ball. Fletcher's an active athlete, a young man that's had six operations, shoulder and knee. Biley barely gets ironed with that shot. Leitner with his eighth rebound, and Bobby Hurley runs the offense. Hurley loves the traps. He really invites the trapping defense. McCaffrey down deep, Grand Hill. Shooting is cooling a bit for Duke after the 52% start. There's Hurley picking up the loose ball. He's short, but he got his own. They get a fresh 45 seconds. I really believe if you play Bob Hurley, you've got to allow him to beat you from the perimeter. You can't allow him to beat you with drive penetration like right here. He, he lost it. He lost that, but he's excellent in driving and fighting the open man. Bowers got it back. Off the glass. He gets it down. Arlen Bowers on the board for the first time. That's the r, &R game. Rip and run of Arkansas. Excellent two-man basketball. A little simple give and go by the Razorbacks. And now it's a five-point game with six minutes to go first half. The winner of this game plays the winner of Arizona Notre Dame to follow here this evening on ESPN. Leitner got his own, draws the foul. Leitner gets fouled, but it was excellent penetration. The dribble move by McCaffrey that really created that opportunity. Thanksgiving football coming your way tomorrow. The Mountaineers and the Gamecocks at 8 o'clock Eastern time tomorrow night. Thanksgiving style on ESPN. You know, you mentioned Thanksgiving. I hate to do this, Bob. Don't get mad at me for doing this. But I really believe that basketball should not start until one week. One week after Thanksgiving. I think December 1st should be the start of college basketball because people are still, as Leighton converts, really talking football with the pole matchups and all of that. And it, I hate to say it because I'm a basketball junkie who loves the game and I'd rather have a game every night of the week. But I really think for the best interest of basketball, December 1st would be a great starting date. Yeah, but the only problem is the bull bids are going out earlier, so hoop starts earlier well, now. Next year, the bull bids will go out after the first game, Michigan and Notre Dame, because next year there is no date when they have to give them out. They just abuse that. They don't even recognize that date. Bowers driving. His shot blocked by Leitner. Biley with the follow. And up strong in scoring is Isaiah Morris. He has nine. And no one recognizes transition to get back defensively. And Bob Hurley gets a little duck. I could have made that layup. But what a great offensive rebound by IBM. Isaiah Butch Mars. 31-25. Blue Devils back door to Bowers off the high post. And Bowers has a couple straight. See, they've really picked up their execution in their half-court game. A little simple entry to the post and a little backdoor cut. That's an excellent move without the basketball by Arkansas. Hurley's down the line pass. Deflected out of bounds by Ken Biley. And Bobby Hurley now. Becoming more of a force offensively, but keep in mind, he is playing with a couple of fouls. Mike Krzyzewski does not want him to pick up another before the half that has five minutes remaining. Bob Hurley's in a league where he faces top-notch point guards almost every night when you talk Kenny Anderson or Walt Williams, and you look at Chris Corciani and John Crotty. 
get you ready for college basketball. There's Littner, high post, bumped away by Bowers. Fletcher almost stole it, and McCaffrey with a loose ball. He's yeah. shooting the ball with so much confidence this year. Last year, if he missed two or three shots, he knew that he was coming right out. They had Phil Henderson, so he didn't get a whole lot of playing time. Mayberry, Bowers, early watching him. McCaffrey on Mayberry, who gets it back and goes baseline right, fakes Leitner. Can't get it down, but he did draw the foul. Excellent fake by Lee Mayberry. Hey, you know who's the MVP of Arkansas? Forget about Nolan Richardson and Mayberry and, and Todd Day. The MVP is Nolan the third. You say, why Nolan the third? I'll simply tell you, he married Mayberry's daughter, Lute Olsen. Today we're holding court in the lobby. Lute Olsen says, I was recruiting Mayberry. As soon as I found out he was involved with Nolan's, uh, Nolan Jr. was involved with Mayberry's sister. As we look at Nolan the third, he said, I got out of the picture. I knew it was all over. I had no chance. A hey, blood runs deep in the Richardson family. Oh, what a unbelievable. I guess you could say, I, I don't know how to describe it, the situation with Nolan losing his beautiful girl, Yvonne, uh, one of the most touching as we look at Nolan the third stories I ever read was by the gifted, just brilliant writer, Frank DeFord. He wrote an unbelievable story about that whole scenario, and like Nolan said, no loss, no boo can ever, ever hurt me like the pain I had to suffer losing my beautiful girl to leukemia at such a young, young age. Yeah, the way he was booed his first year in Arkansas was a speck on his shoulder compared to that. I, I can't even imagine what it must feel like to go through that kind of pain. Arkansas will defend here as Duke keeps the ball. Looks like the Razorbacks will zone up on the baseline play with Yuri right in front of the passer. Bobby Hurley, who gets it out on top to Brian Davis. Clock runs with just over four minutes to go. Duke by four, and it could be less. Bowers steals and scores. One of the reasons Arkansas has really made this spurt has been the defensive tenacity of Bowers. It really becomes contagious with all your other people. Here's the half-court trap again. Really causing some problems now for Duke. But look over the top of that trap. See the size? That size creates a problem. Leitner high post. Dribbles and shoots, and that's a four-point lead for Duke. Not a problem if you can get it to your postman who can finalize like Leitner. He has 15, and he's nearing double digits and rebounds in the first half. Todd Day shovels Ron Yuri, and he was fouled on the block. What a great look by Todd Day, showing his versatility, his passing ability. I talked earlier, I'm going to pick my all MC Hammer team. You know, MC Hammer can entertain, he can dance, he can rap, he can do it all. He's one of the hottest people in America. When you talk about versatility and people that can do it all, you got to talk Todd Day, but you also have to talk about guys like Billy Owens, and certainly Stacey Ogman. They're really versatile performers. Christian Leitner with a second foul leaves the game. Crawford Palmer back in for Duke. That is a big factor with 327 to go before halftime. Ron Urey will be at the line. Leitner with 15 points, but two recent fouls. They don't want him to pick up that third as you look at Leitner on that sideline. Doesn't have the size around him like last year with Allah Abdel Nabi. You take a look at Ron Urey. What a tremendous high school player he was out of Memphis. But he ran into so many problems off the court. And he's fortunate to have given him another chance. I mean, he was in some major problems. Had a situation, was on a gun with him on his possession at a party. He had some problems in terms of alcohol. He's battling back, and they say he's really trying to get his life in order, and he's certainly wishing nothing but the best. He has a couple of free throws. Arkansas has it back to a two-point game, 3.27 before halftime. Stay with us at halftime. We'll take a look at the importance of imports. College basketball coaches trying to ride that foreign wave, scouring the planet for talent. That's at halftime. Let's go back to the garden now. Bob and Dick. All right, Chris, thanks a lot. And Arkansas has an import that's redshirting as a freshman right now. 6'7", 200, Davor Remat, a tennis player who they say at 6'7", can fly. And if he's eligible next year, he'll be something for Arkansas. I have no problem. We're going to talk about that at halftime with Chris uh, in that interesting feature about foreign players. But you talk about foreign players, take a look at Texas, Panama, Myers, Dexter, Cambridge, Tom Penders in the Southwest Conference has some outstanding foreign players in their lineup. You know what really scares me with foreign players is we have a little discussion here, Larry Lembo and Mike Krzyzewski, talking about the foul situation on Christian Leitner. 
I'll tell you what really troubles me about that as we look at Mike Krzyzewski looking on. I'll tell you what the problem here is, Christian Dick. Leitner the very it. first foul of the game, Arkansas thought it was on Leitner, but they called Bobby Hurley for reaching in from the weak side. They think he has three. Leitner does have two fouls. Yeah, it was that first call. I remember you referred to it on the opening. So look at Leitner. We look at front court scoring. Leitner outscoring the entire <laughs> Arkansas starters 15 to 10. He looks up at the board. He likes what he sees. He's from Angola, New York. He also has nine rebounds. You know, I was getting, I want to finalize that point about foreign players. A lot of agents are getting involved, and that really troubles me and worries me about agents trying to, you know, offer some money out there in terms of trying to place kids. And that could really, really be bothersome in terms of going out and getting that hired gun for maybe a year. Well, let's see how Duke answers this Arkansas flurry. Hogs down by two. Davis misses the layup. Grand Hill the follow. Won't go for him, gets his own, and scores. He's so quick to the offensive boards. He's so skilled with the basketball on a perimeter for a guy his size at 6'8". Under three minutes to go. Duke has it back to four. This is Ron Urey. Oh, Morris beat his man Crawford Palmer, and that's where they missed the reach of Christian Leitner. I'll tell you one thing. Not only Bowers' defensive ability has kept Arkansas in the game, but it's been the offensive productivity off the bench by IBM. Isaiah Morris, 10 points, replacing Oliver Miller, who got in foul trouble. There's a turnover. Razorbacks ready to lay that big cheer. I think I wanted a favorite, my favorite cheers when they lay that big suey chant down there in Razorback land. That's one of my favorites. Duke with its sixth turnover. Arkansas has coughed it up three times. There's Crawford Palmer up strong to clear the defensive boards. Grand Hill finds Thomas Hill. Easy to. Arkansas not rotating back defensively. Really hitting the offensive boards and really getting caught for the layup. Morris past Palmer. Kept alive. Todd Day and Thomas Hill reached in to foul him. He got a smack across the face, Todd Day. I love versatile players. They really can do so much for your club. Nolan Richardson looking on, but we talk about Todd Day, number 10 here. He's one of America's truly gifted, versatile performers. And Syracuse knows all about that with Billy Owens and certainly down at Michigan State with Steve Smith. You talk about a versatile guy that can rebound. There he is on the offensive boards. He's going to get mugged right across the face. Oh, and he goes down. He goes down. Hill hits him. That's how Foreman, the fat man, George Foreman's going to go down when Holyfield lays a big right to his jaw. <laughs> All right. Did you see that press conference the other day? You talk about Millie Vanillis and frauds and phony and, oh, man, don't get me started. Hey, well, there's nothing phony about this guy. He's got five points. Four times he's cleared the board. He's number 11 in Arkansas scoring in this his junior year. Memphis produces so many outstanding players. And there's another one. Isaiah Morris with 13 points off the bench. Forget the big O for now. He's doing a great job off that bench. They're picking up his defensive. There it is. Excellent rotation. Mayberry fouled by Grant Hill. Hill did get the ball, but he laid the body on him. There was no doubt about the body of crosses. There's Nolan. Nolan scrolling that sideline. Now we're going to see the rotation of Mayberry. He's going to try to dribble in the gap. Now there's the trap, and here's the rotation. Anticipate. He anticipated so well. Now here comes the body. The body's laid on him. He does get ball, but he lays the body on him. Todd Day and Lee Mayberry with two points between them. The first five minutes of the game. Now they've combined for 11 with Mayberry at the line. You know, when we talk about lead guards, I'm talking about a guard who has the ability to score as well as penetrate. Certainly Kenny Anderson is number one. But right behind him, I'd go Mayberry, and then I'd go Chris Smith, Walt Williams of Maryland, and Henry Williams of University of North Carolina, Charlotte. That would be my all-Isaiah team. They're just like Isaiah Thomas. We got a heck of a game here. Arkansas has the lead back with a minute 50 to go before halftime. Leitner out of the game is hurting Duke right now. Uh, Hill taken good. away. Todd Day. He gets it back to him. On one and he'll do it himself. Morris has it. Davis took a poke. Oh, is he it. hungry, Morris? Is he hungry on the glass? Thomas Hill, the final touch and possession for Duke, and Crawford Palmer will clear it for Grant Hill. Bobby Hurley back to Hill. Mayberry with an air steal. And Mayberry gets foul number one. Not a good foul by Mayberry. The offensive player is 28 feet from the goal. He's not even in shooting position. Not really the kind of foul you want out of an All-American player. 
Billy McCaffrey back in for Duke. A little offensive spark as they take out their defender, Brian Davis. Coach K needs a little scoring now with Leitner on the bench. He'll also counter with the senior, Greg Kubek. But he's set to replace the shooter, Grant Hill, so number 22 will have to wait. Clifford Palmer is a key player for Duke. He has to provide that bulk and that size along the baseline to give them quality minutes because they're so limited in size. They'll get two big guys next year with Cherokee Parks and Eric Meek coming in from California with two 6'11s who can play. Boy, did you see the arc on that free throw? Todd Day, coast to coast, rejected hey. by Grant Hill. Four on two, Hurley, Hill, taken away by Bowers. It stays with Duke. Don't you like to see that in a young player, though, Dickey? Misses the free throw, back down the court to block a shot. Well, you got to play on the defensive end. The one thing with Duke, you better play on both ends of the floor. Bobby Hurley in for Kubek with a minute five remaining first half. McCaffrey and Thomas Hill passes the jumper. They got to find some shots for McCaffrey. He's too good a shooter. Hurley for three, missed it badly. That's the guy I'd let shoot the ball from the perimeter. I'm not convinced he can shoot consistently from outside. He relies so much on dribble drive penetration. Kubek would have had an easy two, but good hustle by the man they called Truck. And that means small truck, Arlen Bowers at 5'10", 175. Duke's got to find shots for this guy, McCaffrey. He's not going to be able to get the shot with his dribble move. Mayberry steals it. Here's Bowers got against the trailer. Hurley. Got Kicks the trailer. It. Yes, yes. Little dipsy dude, Dunkaroo, Jam City, baby. The Razorbacks, R&R, &R, rip and run. And they lead by three with 35 seconds to go before halftime right now. McCaffrey at the other end. Yeah. And over Yuri scores. Billy McCaffrey really has the great rotation. He wanted the foul. He was begging, hey, get me the foul as well. Shot clock is off. Arkansas with the ball by one as we approach halftime. Chris Fowler standing by to fill you in. And Bowers hits it from outside. That was great two-man execution. Bowers flared to the open spot on the floor, and Mayberry delivered it perfectly. Hurley. Weaving his way through, but Morris clears it for Mayberry. Somebody's got to put it up. Oh, Yuri, what a right great side play. play. What a great play. No Dude. basket. No basket. Well, and a technical on it. Did he? Did he? The dunk was after the buzzer, and Arkansas leads by three at the half. I thought he was going to call a technical for grabbing a rim. There it is. Got the clock. Take a look. There's the dish. Does he get it off? Here it is. Up, 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 and away. Nope. No, baby, no. Great call by Jimmy Barr. Great call. And a great flurry at the end of the first half. The Razorbacks trailed by as many as nine. They lead by three at the end of the first half. It's number two against number six, and number two coming back after a sluggish start to lead by three points. Let's go back now to the second half. Bob Carpenter with Dick Vitale at Madison Square Garden, fellas. All right, Chris, thank you very much. We're getting ready for the second half here, and if it starts off any way the first half ended, it's going to be wild. Bob Carpenter with Dick Vitale, Arkansas by three at the half. But early in the ballgame, Dick, Christian Leitner gave everybody on the floor a lesson in how to play down low. Christian Leitner was the dominant inside player. He certainly took over until he got in foul trouble. We take a look at him right here with the excellent screen, and now he's going to roll inside. And he makes the real wide body, gets the good angle, has the excellent touch. He is an outstanding inside-outside player. He had big numbers in that first half. He outscored the entire front court in terms of Arkansas with his 15 big markers. He was tremendous. And maybe a little bit of play from Arkansas from an unexpected source. They sort of, oh, treaded water in the first half. But Arlen Bowers with pressure defense, the little guy, got them going. Well, the truck does a great job defensively. I love him. He's an all-Rambo man. He can really play on a defensive end. He does a great job stepping out. He traps exceptionally well. Now, look at his quickness. He takes it to the goal like a halfback. He explodes. He told me today, he says, I'm ready to play. And we look at his numbers right here. Arlen Truck Bowers. It's so great to see these unsung heroes, guys that really don't have a, get a lot of ink and do not get a lot of publicity. And I'll tell you another guy. What about IBM? Isaiah Butch Morris off the bench was sensational for Arkansas. They have a very deep bench. 13 points and seven rebounds for him. Let's check the team numbers now for the first 20 minutes of play. Arkansas shot bad early, came back a little stronger, and Duke at one time was shooting 52%. Arkansas has had a lot more free throws, seven more than Duke has. Rebounding is rather even, though Arkansas has out-rebounded every one of its opponents so far. 
Razorbacks have taken care of the ball and their bench scoring a little deceiving because they always get points off the bench. But now it's time to talk a little Windex rebounding. Well, we're going to go to the Windex player of the week. Outstanding performance by Windex man. Well, we could talk about certainly Christian Leitner had a big week. LaFonso Ellis, the Fonz, tremendous rebound in numbers for Notre Dame. But I have to say our Windex player of the week. We have to go to Fayetteville, Arkansas and go for Mr. O, Oliver Miller. He had great numbers. He did a tremendous job against Oklahoma. He did a super job in their first game. He's been a dominant force, averaging better than 19 points a game, 11 rebounds a game. He has been a glass eater, the Windex man, the monster man, Oliver Miller. And despite the fact he's been a non-factor tonight, Windex will donate $1,000 to the Boys Club of New York. Arkansas with Mayberry and Day, three for 15 from the field, lead by three. Arkansas Razorbacks by three as the second half is about to get underway. They also have possession. Christian Leitner, a big story early. 15 points with nine rebounds. And off the bench, Isaiah Morris, the IBM man, the man for Nolan Richardson with his 13. And he has added seven rebounds to his resume this evening. It's the Hills with McCaffrey, Hurley, and Leitner out there for Duke. Arkansas with Lee Mayberry in the backcourt with Todd Day and Arlen Bowers. The big O is in there, Oliver Miller, and he's playing alongside Isaiah Morris. They go alley-oop to Mayberry with the set play off the inbounds. It does not work. They're going with the big lineup playing Morris and Miller together. McCaffrey foul, but no basket, they say. That was a good call. That foul really took place prior to the release of the basketball. Arlen Bowers with his second. Mike Krzyzewski was asking for a hanging on the rim at the buzzer in the first half against Arkansas. Did not get the call, so the Razorbacks on a very good call and non-call by the official. Leading by three, and Arkansas's Bowers gets the steal. He's something tonight. Bowers really plays well defensively, anticipates exceptionally well. Let's see now Miller going against Leitner, who can pick up that next foul. Look at Miller trying to use his body down inside. See, they double up now. There's the double down. Couple of guys working with two fouls, Leitner and Miller. Bowers penetrates. Day can't hit the follow. Leitner with his 10th rebound of the night. Look at Leitner handling the rock out in the open court. He uses either hand exceptionally well. Hurley, and that's a turnover. Nope, the Razorbacks. The Razorbacks thought they had the ball, but they tipped it on the baseline. No one loves Bob Hurley's game, I don't think, more than I do. Maybe his dad and certainly Mike Krzyzewski. But he really has a tendency to try and force plays that aren't available. They don't want to reduce his aggressive style of play, but he has to play a little bit more under control. Double team, this day helps out, and Leitner walked with it. He lifted his pivot foot prior to the release of the basketball. Jimmy Burrs, one of the real blue chipper fishers, blowing a whistle here tonight along with Larry Lumbo. Two outstanding guys of Bob Barnett. I haven't seen a whole lot of Bob, but I've seen those other two, and I can tell you they are solid gold. Mike Krzyzewski's team of turnover number 11. Here's Miller down deep against Leitner, kicks it for Morris. And he throws an air ball with Grand Hill in his face. Morris wanted the ball, said his hand was hit. But Miller does a great job. What I was impressed with there was Miller's ability to pass the basketball and find the open man. He really relocates well. He likes to trace the basketball. They follow the ball. Bowers on Hurley. Key matchup throughout this game out on top. Bowers really loves the challenge of playing the highly acclaimed Bob Hurley. Mayberry cannot stop Billy McCaffrey. McCaffrey doing a better job with the dribble penetration, a little jump shot than I thought he could do. I thought he had to come off the screen to get his free shot against this quick miss. There's Bowers. That's a three. He's one of the Memphis connections playing now for Nolan Richardson. He has five. Hey, Arkansas owns Memphis now. They're getting the players, the All-Staters, the players of the year. Well, they did during that transition period when they had that problem with Dana Kirk. But certainly Larry Fitch gets his great wins as well. There's Miller, or rather check it with a rebound. It was Isaiah Morris. After Miller had blocked Leitner. Now he goes the other way. Leitner steals it away, but Miller got a loose ball. Leitner stripped him, but Miller came right back with some quick hands. I was teasing Oliver when I spoke at Arkansas at an affair down there two weeks ago. I said, Oliver, you're the Domino man. Domino's pizza. He <laughs> Here's Leitner, kicks oh, it, Grant nice Hill pass. draws the foul on Isaiah Morris. The Duke team does such a tremendous job driving the ball, dribbling the gap, and constantly always taking the ball at people. Look at Leitner now, he drives, he draws people to him, and he dishes. The 3D man we talked about, drive, draw, and dish the rock. 
Arkansas with its biggest lead, but Mike Krzyzewski has Grant Hill, his freshman at the line. Guy came up to me at halftime and says, he can't be a true freshman, can he? I tell you, he is so smooth. I know down at Duke, they're so excited about his presence. Just like Eric Montross and certainly Cliff Rozier are going to be dominant players for North Carolina. They'll eventually get some PT, some playing time. Damon Bailey is going to fit the puzzle perfectly down at Indiana. Hoosiers open up on ESPN. And that Maui Classic down there in that sunshine. Indiana. Four-point game. Arkansas 49-45. T. Miller can pass the ball. He's an excellent passer. Morris taken away. Grant Hill slapped it out. Razorbacks will keep it with 33 seconds on the shot clock. Arkansas trying to take advantage of their great size by going to a high-low setup with Miller up high and then sliding Morris down inside. Pass to Miller off the mark. Grand Hill, He's got there the he goes. Doesn't need the trailer. He's going to finish that baby with a little jam city. Grand Hill with 12. Duke back to within two. Miller around Leitner. Look at that touch for the big guy. He's got some smooth, smooth moves inside. He on and Leitner are talking to each other a great deal on the floor. On the year, he's shooting 88% now, 22 out of 25. That's fair shooting. That's like my shooting. I mean, he can shoot the rock. Yeah, but he's under pressure. <laughs> Here's Bobby Hurley, races past Day and Morris, kicks it for Leitner. And the rebound, Morris to the big O. Hurley was under control that time, had great control. Look at Mayberry, scamper about, and he gets it down with the shooter's touch. That's what makes him so special, the ability to create his own shot. Like a Thomas Edison guy, he's an innovator, a creator, and his coach gives him great freedom on the floor, and that's the key. He doesn't lock him up. He allows him to use his great ability. There's McCaffrey from Hurley. Oliver Miller a touch. Thomas Hill over the trees. Got it and scores. Thomas Hill, excellent jumper. Really got a chance to get some PT when Robert Bricky got hurt last year, took advantage of it, and really made a great impression on Mike Krzyzewski. Arlen Bowers took a blow to the face, and officials time out as they check on him. I was saying, Mr. Lembo, I'm okay. I'm tough. I'm from Memphis. I'm hard as rock. They call me the truck. Don't you know I'm a Rambo man? <laughs> Boy, he played some great defense in the second part of that first half. He'll leave now. Ron Yuri will come in. This is a very versatile Arkansas team. They have a lot of players who are tough to tell whether they're guards or forwards. In fact, they've been called with Oliver Miller out there, a center with four guards. Well, Nolan does a great job of recruiting athletes, people that can play inside, outside, who can run and jump. And those are the kind of athletes in today's style that really are so positive. Yuri down deep. Miller gives it back to him. Nice give and go. And it draws a foul. Thomas Hill. I'm really impressed with the passing ability of Oliver Miller. He's not forcing shots. He's not trying to force a shot that's not there. And he's really getting the ball to open people. The big O, Oliver Miller. Many feel his presence makes Arkansas the national championship contender it is. Rated number one in some polls ahead of UNLV. Oh, no, no, number no, 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 wait a minute. There's nobody can put them ahead of UNLV. They're in another class. They're ready for the expansion teams in the NBA. Hey, I wasn't agreeing. Hey, hey, I just said it's been hey, done. Hey, what they did to the Russians was unbelievable. <laughs> Harry Johnson was like a man-child. Killer, Stacey Augment. And they played without Elmer Spencer, the seven-footer. And they played without George Ackles. They were unreal. They got a date February 10th at Barnhill. Ooh. It'll be rocking Vegas and Arkansas. Arkansas has added three on to its halftime lead. Hawks by six over the Blue Devils. They'll go full court pressure here as Duke brings the ball in with Grant Hill. To McCaffrey. Mayberry trapping him with Yuri. They get the steal, but Lee Mary Mayberry had to foul to get the steal. Arkansas really rotating into that zone trap. Really applied great quickness on the trap. Mayberry drawing uh, comparisons now in Nolan Richardson's history to his great Paul Pressey back in the 
early 80s. Well, you mentioned Paul Pressey. That was with Tulsa in 1981-82. They won the NIT championship. His first win as a coach in a major college level, big time win, was over Denny Crum and the Louisville Cardinals, who were the defending national champs. And they beat Syracuse here for the NIT title on this floor 10 seasons ago. Leitner blocked. Duke thought a man standing out of bounds knocked the ball back in. Day under pressure. The follow jam misses from Morris, and the Blue Devils are running with Thomas Hill. Not a good shot by Todd Day, but he lost control on the floor. Lost his footing. Bobby Hurley and McCaffrey, who wants the ball. Right past Yuri. Boy, the Allen Tom sophomore is doing a super job. His brother, we talked about, the outstanding receiver for Stanford, a tremendous receiver on a collegiate level Back of football. He was just named first team All-American in the last week. Well, I know the people at Notre Dame would certainly pick him first team All-American. He just absolutely was brilliant against the fighting Irish when Stanford upset the Irish. Todd Day was Denver. shaken up a bit on that play. We'll see the Irish later on tonight against number three Arizona in the doubleheader nightcap here. McCaffrey with the steal. Hurley to the paint. Right side, Thomas Hill. What an excellent bounce pass by Hurley. But that was created by the defensive ability of Billy McCaffrey. Anticipated exceptionally well. Arkansas's lead down to two. Ron Yuri all the way in. Just great individual ability. Yuri averaged double figures as a freshman. Then he averaged, as he averaged about 13, 12, and 10. His playing time was reduced a little because remember this, he was suspended for a full year. He had a red shot. Yeah, he was the Southwest Conference Newcomer of the Year four years ago. Been around for a while. Here's McCaffrey. Along with the three, Leitner had to push off to get the rebound. McCaffrey really asserts himself offensively. Number three on Christian Leitner, assistant Mike Bray, and the Duke Blue Devils a bit worried now. Leitner with three. Will they sit him down, or will he play a while? That's one of the major problems facing Duke. Keeping a Christian Leitner on the floor, especially in a scenario where they don't have a lot of big people like last year with Allah Abdon Nabi giving him a great size and an inside attack. The two of them, in fact, Abdon Nabi was the first name Nolan Richardson mentioned yesterday when he talked about Duke. Trying for his own rebound after the miss was Daryl Hawkins. See him in for only a short spell earlier. Now he's back in. Here's Hurley. And he goes around everybody and draws the foul on Ken Biley. You know, some people would say, take Leitner out of the game right now. But here it is where a coach has to understand his personnel. He has to understand his people. He knows he's in a war right now. He's down four points. He can't afford to have Leitner sitting next to him, Mike Krzyzewski, as an assistant coach. Because in a three-minute spurt, with Arkansas such a great spurt team, Miller would be going probably wild inside, and you'd have a double-figure deficit by the time you bring him back in the game. I salute Mike Krzyzewski leaving him on the floor. Bob Hurley, five points on the night with that free throw. He has seven assists to go with it. See, next year they'll have some depth inside in terms of their big people when they get the two new kids. Razorbacks four on one. Mayberry misses and following it in, Daryl Hawkins. Daryl Hawkins, another good athlete. Got a lot of playing time last year. A runner, a jumper. Hurley with Leitner to his right, kicks it to him, turnover. Ron Urey has it, and the Razorbacks are now five on four. Play was not there. Miller. Urey got the rebound. Miller shoots the jumper in the secondary phase of their running game. The trail man. McCaffrey had the steal and lost it. 35 on the shot clock, and now a steal by Grant Hill. He's got Bobby Hurley right wing, left side. McCaffrey rejected. Get it out of here. Ron Urey with the block. Here's Hawkins. What athletes. What athletes down in Arkansas. They may be struggling in football, but there'll be no struggle in basketball. Razorbacks by six and a technical on Mike Krzyzewski. I'll tell you one thing. Jimmy Barr will not waste time calling the tee. He is one of the quickest in laying the tee. And Telling people, I'm in control. Just sent a message to Bobby Knight. In fact, Mike Krzyzewski should call Bobby up, his former mentor. He's had some run-ins with James Burr. Coach K thought there was an offensive foul on that drive by Hawkins at the other end. Ron Urey will go to the line. I didn't see. I didn't see that offensive foul. Arkansas conceivably could go up by eight and have the ball here. 
There's Hawkins taking the ball to the goal. I think the defensive player really stepped in. I thought the defensive player must establish defensive position by facing the offensive player and having both feet on the ground. In that scenario, I didn't see that. Blue Devils call a timeout. They're down by seven. Arkansas with another free one and the ball. Sunday means NFL on ESPN. Game day at noon Eastern, a preview of the entire day, and then prime time with all the highlights at 7 o'clock, followed by the Seahawks and the Chargers at 8 o'clock Eastern time, Sunday evening, NFL on ESPN. Coach K with a T, one free throw downed, and at the line, Ron Yuri adding to the seven-point lead with that one. Ron Yuri there on a free throw line from out of Whitehaven High School out of Memphis, Tennessee. He was suspended in the 88-89 season. And I'll tell you one thing, you look at his numbers, 11.7 as a freshman, 13-4 as a south. Last year had 10 coming off the bench, and now is back into the starting lineup. Arkansas with its biggest lead now. Previously it was six. They have an eight-point spread plus the ball with 13.25 to go. It's kind of gut check time for the Blue Devils right now. Mike Krzyzewski said it would be a game of streaks, and it has been that. Yuri looking for Biley. Steal nice right there. McCaffrey. Nice pass. McCaffrey makes like his brother. He goes down. They throw the bomb to him. He catches it and he delivers it. He said, just like my brother Eddie. Wasn't six, but an easy two. There's Leitner with a bump away, and he is getting tenacious on defense. He plays so hard. He's really playing with a lot of emotion. Finally off his leg and Duke gets it back with great defense. Duke automatically goes into a trapping situation if you don't have excellent spacing offensively. If you are together and you are within two or three feet of each other, you can be guaranteed that they will jump in and trap as Todd Day, their All-American, comes on the floor. And uh, Mr. Bench tonight, Isaiah Morris, with 13 of Arkansas's 19 bench points. Ron Yuri will take a breather, and he's done well in a starting role tonight with 10 of his own. Ron Yuri gives you an athlete on the floor. He gives you a guy that can play along the baseline as long as and at the wing. Bobby Hurley won't go for him. And the rebound ripped down by Morris, who outlets for Arlen Bowers. Bowers has been steady tonight. Day switches it. Ooh, Isaiah. Isaiah. Butch Morris, IBM, really delivering here today. What a great pass across the baseline, though. You know, years ago, they would say that's a bad pass, but today, if you can throw the pass across the defense, it is an excellent pass. There's Leitner, turnaround, over Miller, foul number three on the big O. They didn't waste any time getting that hand up. Last year, they had Mario credit. They shared some time inside. Watch the two big guys inside. leitner has got the inside position right now. Takes the little jumper up. Miller's going to bump him. Got him on the shooting hand. And Christian Leitner, an outstanding free throw shooter, 9 of 11 so far. And number one in the ACC a year ago will go to the strike. Arkansas will not face the kind of half-court defensive pressure they're facing today when they play in the Southwest Conference. There is no way. I know Texas has some great personnel with Joey Wright and Dexter, Dexter Cambridge, Hannibal Myers, but they will not see the kind of pressure they're facing here today. And if they can get out of this test and go to the next round against the winner of Arizona and the Fighting Irish and Notre Dame, I'll tell you, that's the way of really, really finding out how good your team really is. Oh, day. What a great look. They released Day. That's just pure, we talk about athletic ability. Here's Can't Leitner against Miller. Kubek receives and scores. Did you see the pass by Leitner with the left hand? I can't believe it. I mean, hey, Bob, I say it a number of times. We get paid to sit here at courtside and be part of a scenario like this. One great individual plays we're seeing. Look at Miller working inside. They're going to dump it to the big guy. Get it down to him. Leitner's got three. Get it to him. It won't go. Leitner the rebound. But well, that was a good look. They got it to the number one option. Duke down by six with 11.45 to go. Am I impressed by Leighton's ability to handle the ball, move without it, shoot it? Look at this guy. He wants to drive. Dumps it for Kubek. Senior can't knock it down. Oliver Miller outletting. And here comes Mayberry. Left side, Morris. Got his own. Isaiah Morris will not be sitting on the sideline a great deal this year. This guy is going to earn 
great, great minutes because he is a jumper, a runner, and he can deliver. There's Grant Hill, and that is an offensive foul on the freshman. Watch Isaiah Morris work the glass down. He's going to kick it. There he is, going to get the ball up. Now watch him follow. Watch his offensive rebound. I mean, he was coming up before he shot the ball. And you know what's really outstanding there? The tip. And you tip a basketball with your fingers. Todd Day right around Kubek. Hey, Forget that matchup. They have so many weapons. They can attack you in so many ways. Hey, you talked about Isaiah. Double-double time, Dick. 17 points, 10 rebounds already. Off the bench. Of course, Christian Leitner with a double-double of his own as a starter. But you expected it out of Leitner. Bob, we didn't expect it out of IBM. Todd Day reaching in on Brian Davis. That's kind of a foul word. Coach says, hey, this guy's not one of their better offensive players. Defensive specialist. Why are you fouling him out there? That's what drives coaches bananas. That's what makes them lose their hair like I did. And you look at Nolan on that sideline. Look at the built on that guy. Is he built or what? Played any? Yeah, he's, he's nowhere near as big as he used to be either. He's, he's worked hard to stay slim. He played for the San Diego Chargers. And he played for the Dallas Chaparral. Chaparral. ABA. ABA. I know Nolan couldn't shoot the rock. He had to be a defensive player. I just look at that upper body. It had to be Brick City, USA. Well, he coaches great defense, so he obviously knows a lot about it. See, they're clearing out the side, trying to isolate Leitner. He's working against big number 34, Roosevelt Wallace, and there's Hurley missing the three, and Wallace has it. He hasn't been able to knock down a perimeter shot yet, Bobby Hurley. Mayberry blocked by Thomas Hill, and here comes Hill, Grant Hill. Hill. Right here, Thomas Hill's going to... Oh, he walked. He did lift his pivot foot. He did lift his pivot foot. At the other end, the Duke player is down. Bobby Hurley got knocked to the floor before that two-on-one fast break. And the officials did the proper thing by letting the team with the advantage play until that play fell apart. And we looked at King K. Mr. Krzyzewski disagrees. Certainly, if I had to rate my top five coaches in the country, John Thompson. That's right, the man, John Thompson, Dean Michelangelo, Mr. Smith. You'd have to talk about the general Robert Montgomery Knight as we look at Bob Hurley. And then you'd have to talk about Luke, GQ himself, Mr. Olson, and Mike, King K, Mr. Krzyzewski. That's my five all Rolls Royce, all John Woodens. I mean, those five guys can flat out coach. And the reason I put those five there, number one, players graduate, and number two, they win consistent, consistently. And you see here no problems in terms of investigations or anything in their programs. And Coach K, as we learned last week, will not hang that Final Four banner from last year until all his players graduate from that team. Here's Mayberry into the paint and reaching in on him. There was a Duke foul. The one area Arkansas is really going to have to stress and improve on is their half-court game. Because in an open-court game, they are just super. Nolan Richardson and his staff, Mike Anderson, an assistant, played for Nolan on a Tulsa team with Paul Pressey. He said, I made Pressey what he is. <laughs> hey, I'll tell you why they won the NIT. Anderson missed a field goal in the Missouri Valley Tournament that cost them the automatic bid to the NCAA. Push off right there by Isaiah. Push off by Isaiah. By the way, a moment ago, two quick fouls on Brian Davis. He has four in the game. Isaiah Morris with his third. And with 9.46 to go, Arkansas by 10. The team foul situation is seven for Arkansas and only five for Duke. So it is into the one and one go the Blue Devils. And don't forget, folks, when they get a little flurry down the stretch and one of those teams reaches 10 fouls, the two shot foul comes into automatic play. Haven't seen that tonight, but we've seen it in the NIT down at Coach K's place last week. Duke does a great job of charting and evaluating as you look at Nolan and his staff the foul situation. So, for example, now with Arkansas having seven, they will tell their players to drive to try and get into that bonus situation of ten. And again, that's coaching from that sideline. Grant Hill with a big arc and very short with it, but the rebound. Tony Lang off the bench scores. Antonio Lang with a big play. The freshman from Mobile, Alabama, a valedictorian. And right there, he was a valedictorian how to come up with the loose ball and convert it. He broke the heart. He broke the heart of Dale Brown because LSU was right in the war with Duke for this young man. And there is Antonio Lang. Great head fake. See, Duke utilizes the head fake, the ball fake. They drill on that constantly. 
They're going to call him the Big O here because that was number four on Isaiah Morris. With 17 off the bench, he will take a seat. Oliver Miller, who has scored eight points tonight, but is playing with three fouls, is back in. Please, do not call Oliver Miller the Big O. There is only one Big O that has ever graced the hardwood, and he was from Cincinnati, Ohio. He was real. He was legit. He was the unbelievable. You talk about quintessential player. We're talking about Oscar Robertson. That's the only Big O that I have ever known in my life. Well, this O's bigger if he's not the Big o. <laughs> He is big, baby. He is big. I wouldn't want to feed him. As the Arkansas coaches say, he is large and in charge. And Todd Day driving misses the shot. See, young athletes really would love to play in the Nolan Richardson system. He doesn't really control them from the standpoint, or curtail them, I guess is the better term. He allows them to demonstrate and use their abilities. There's so many coaches that try to over-technicalize and really restrict the player's mobility. And remember, these guys have been playing on the playgrounds all their life, and they really love that up-and-down tempo as we look at foul trouble big here with Grant Hill with four and Leighton with three. Brian Davis, four, but really not, not a major factor. Morris with the four certainly been. One note to add to that, Dick. No foul out trouble among the Arkansas guards. They can be aggressive right down to the wire in this game if they have to be. You know, you mentioned Arkansas's guards. If I had a rate right now, the great backcourts in America, I would say NC State for pure guard play. Corciani and Monroe have to be number one. Then I like Hunt and Anthony over at UNLV. And third, I'd go with Arkansas, especially when Dave plays back there. And Oklahoma would be my fourth. And Pittsburgh with Sean Miller and Jason Matthews. I love that backcourt. Here's Tony Hill. Left-handed, missing. Todd Day, who hit one of two with the rebound. Arkansas, by the way, 18 of 20 from the free throw line today. Duke's going to have to find some threes out of their offensive set as well. Leitner can't stop Miller, but the shot won't drop for him. Bobby Hurley looking for someone open. Is it him? He misses it badly with the left hand. Powers and Day, two on one. Thomas Hill and now McCaffrey back. Offensive foul. Offensive. Yeah, really not a good play by Todd Day. On the other side, Bob Hurley really trying to make it happen offensively, taking some real impossible shots. Bobby really struggling offensively and shooting the ball. But what a competitor. You just got to love his competitive ability and his toughness as a person. He's one for nine from the field. I'll tell you. I'm scouting him and evaluating him. I'd let Bob Hurley have to beat me on the outside. I would not try to pressure him out here. And Christian Leitner, meanwhile, no field goals in the last 15 minutes. Just some free throws during that time. Thomas Hill had to adjust his shot. Hurley has the loose ball. And he is fouled by Lee Mayberry. That'll be his third. See, that's what Bob wants to do. He wants to get you in a situation where you pressure him and then get into a gap force a foul and create a number game and get the open guy the basketball. The only guy that can pressure him, I mean, if you got Anderson Hunt, for example, I mean, he suffocated him. He just didn't pressure him. I mean, he suffocated him in that game with UNLV. See, here it is. He wants to change direction. That's where he's at his best, trying to get into a gap, into a seam, and Mayberry with the reach. Bobby Hurley with a couple of free throws tonight. Five of seven on the year. Should be a great battle in the ACC. A lot of balance. The Atlanta Coast Conference, as you look at Mike Krzyzewski, Mike Gray, and Peter Goodet, Tommy Yamaka, just a solid coaching staff. But you think about the conference, North Carolina personnel-wise has to be number one. And you talk about Duke, Georgia Tech will be a threat with Kenny Anderson, Virginia with Crotty and Stiff. Oh, Thomas Hill! He says, get it out of here, baby. Get it out of here. Thomas Hill, you talk about some great stock. His daddy, that Olympic hurdler. Hey, this is a hurdle. Look at, look at that. He's going to take the ball to the goal. And Hill, look at that hurdle, baby. He's up in the sky. Now, the shot clock does not get reset on those this year, but they only use five seconds to get it down there anyway. Yeah, that's a new rule, not to penalize the defense. There's Wallace with a fadeaway, and McCaffrey pulls it down. Here comes Duke, down by seven with 8.20 to go. Not a good shot by Roosevelt Wallace in that scene. McCaffrey... Was he fouled? Yes, he was fouled before the travel. He was bumped on the outside. Arlen Bowers got him, and that's three on the little guard. Nolan Richardson called it his biggest thrill in basketball when his Tulsa team won the NIT here in 81. There's his assistant, Scott Edgar, and Mike Anderson, the guard on that team, on the left. 
And tonight he's trying to advance to the Friday night final. You'll see it on ESPN when one of these teams takes on either Arizona or Notre Dame. Well, he had that 37 and 0 team at Western Texas Junior College prior to arriving at Tulsa as we see the missed free throw. Yeah, two national championships in a row. Yeah, he was 37 and 0, and then he got the job at Tulsa, and he did a tremendous job in Tulsa at Paul Press. He did a 101 in, I just think, 13 in one stretch. I mean, they were just incredible. McCaffrey, the second of two, he has 15. Razorbacks, Daryl Hawkins, a 6'5 junior forward, is in. Getting a breather will be Roosevelt Wallace. Hawkins is a guy who gives them the ability to spark some offense off the bench. Yeah, he's an athlete. He's a runner, a jumper, a good offensive rebounder. He'll give them 10 to 12 good minutes every game and give them a little spark, give some other guys a blow now and then and Arkansas now with the ball no field goals since the 11 minute mark remaining in this game Ron Yuri for Bowers almost traveled Yuri got it back double pump and it's Miller missing on the follow a foul is called they're pointing at Bill McCaffrey it'll be his second I'll tell you one thing the preseason NIT the Dodge NIT has really lined up some outstanding basketball teams each year to kick off the season as you look at Mike Krzyzewski it's a real test I mean last year I talked about Kansas and the Jayhawks you had UNLV St. John's you had LSU I mean it just gets better and better in terms of kicking off the season with some outstanding teams and, and they do a great job here in terms of promoting it and, and really working hard their committee and it's not easy to promote basketball prior to Thanksgiving and during the Thanksgiving era. Nice rotation. Oliver Miller with his ninth point of the night. Richardson in his sixth year at the helm of the Hawks looking for his 110th win against 51 losses. And a lot of those losses came in his first two years. Not many lately. 7.59 to go. Razorbacks by eight. When you look at the at the strength and power in the in the country this year, I'm not too sure that it's not west of the Mississippi. Uh, you take UNLV, and most people's eyes number one in Arkansas, and most people's eyes number two in Arizona is usually up there in, in the uh, third spot or fourth spot. So uh, maybe maybe we need to get the Easterners to take a look at what's uh, what's happening elsewhere. They'll get a chance to look at Lute Olson's team next against Notre Dame. Second half of our doubleheader on ESPN tonight. Now, what do you think about that statement? I totally disagree with him. It's east of the Mississippi. He's talking about isolated teams, just individual teams, one here, one there. You go all through the east. I could go on and that. You're wrong, Lute Olsen. Lute Mania is going wild in Tucson, Arizona. <laughs> but the best basketball is east of the Mississippi for a number of teams. There are some good ones out in the west, but not the number there are in the east. Agreed. Well, thanks a lot. Billy McCaffrey. Threw it away, but it was touched by a razor back on the way out. So Duke keeps it down by eight, 7.45 to go. Tony Lang is playing down deep, along with Christian Leitner, with McCaffrey, Thomas Hill, and Hurley, the guards, Grand Hill on the bench with four fouls. McCaffrey! He's really playing well offensively. Such confidence. He's really playing well. He's in a comfort zone. What a couple of good sophomore guards that will be around for a while. Hurley and McCaffrey. Here's Bowers dancing his way through. And his quickness forces the foul. And looks like number three on Bobby Hurley. Hurley really loves the pressure of basketball as well. He's got better quickness than people believe. But there's the little bump with the left hand. Makes contact. Little hand checking. Not allowed. And that's... Another team foul on Duke, and the Razorbacks at the line with a one and one You talk about special areas in terms of winning basketball games. In football, you talk about your special teams. In basketball, you have to talk about your free throw execution, the ability to convert free throws, especially late in the game. I'm going to teach these folks at Madison Square about this new foul rule. They're stopping at seven on the scoreboard like they used to. Got to take it all the way up to eight, nine, and ten. We'll check on that and give you the Duke team fouls. It's at least eight in this second half. And Arkansas could be shooting a lot of two free throw opportunities very shortly. Arkansas really rotates their athletes in the trapping situations, especially if you're four or five feet apart. See, here comes a trap. Early beats it. 
day, and Bowers waiting for their opportunity. McCaffrey, Leitner, backdoor to Thomas Hill, and Oliver Miller with foul number four over the back. Oliver Miller with the foul, created with a great look by Leitner. One of the keys against teams that have court trap is to flash your postman to the basketball. And when you have a postman with the ability of Leitner, it really creates openings for your other people. Arkansas with 12 team fouls this half, counting that one. Duke has eight. So the Blue Devils will get some opportunities even when they're not shooting fouls. It really scraps and claws on the defensive end. When you see their athletes and you look at the size in the modern era, when you talk about Arizona coming in the next game with three, six, eleven guys, and you look at here with Oliver Miller and Isaiah Morris, very tough for them to match up size-wise. But next year when they bring those two big horses, Cherokee Parks and Eric Meek, they're going to make instant contributions. That's how good both guys are from out of California. Nine for Thomas Hill. Arkansas by seven, seven minutes to go. Now execution out of their half-court game becomes really important. They're trying to get a little two-man play with Miller down in the box. Hawkins to Oliver Miller. See how he relocates. He finds the open man. Thomas Hill fouled Todd Day, and I That's believe three. that was a three-pointer. Three. That'll be three free throws. Yeah, you get three now if you're fouled shooting the three-point shot. Miller is an excellent passer. Now look at him. He makes himself big and wide inside. He catches the rock. And now watch him flare the ball. He feels the double team. As soon as the double team rotates to him, he knows there's an open man. And he really catches the guy spotting up inside. We got all the press out here tonight. Dickie Hoops Weiss is in town. I'm telling you, all the press is here in the garden. We got Bill Roden of the New York Times. No free throw there, though. There's Grant Hill back in, as well as Brian Davis. Good offensive-defensive combo for Duke. And Tony Lang will lead, along with Thomas Hill, who committed that rather silly foul. Fortunately for him, Todd Day missed the first of three. Lang's going to be really a good player at Duke. Todd Day hasn't had a big, big game. The guy that's really sparked him in terms of when we talk about spark was Isaiah Butch Morris and the defensive player Bowers. But the presence, too, the presence of guys like Barry and Mayberry and Miller open it up for everyone else. One out of three for Tate. 11 points for him tonight. Lee Mayberry has 10. One out of three gets you in the Hall of Fame in baseball, but puts you on the sideline in basketball. Grand Hill over Miller, air ball. Leitner follows. Christian Leitner hanging around the basket. Good offensive, rebounding position. Hey, knows the lane. Dick, that's a big swing right there. Three free throws. Arkansas only got one, and then Duke the quick basket. They're down by six. Todd Day forced it. Air ball. I think you should take Day out for about 30 seconds. Sometimes you take your star player who's struggling, you let him sit on the sideline, and then bring him in. He's 4 for 15 from the field. And that is, that's not All-American numbers. That's not starter numbers. Errol Hawkins has taken a seat. Todd Day is still in there. He'll be the inbound thrower here. Gowers and Mayberry, the guards. Got to always watch the guy throwing the ball in bounds. He's a dangerous guy, especially when he has the ability of a day. They usually want to set a screen and pop him out off the screen. Miller distributes for Yuri. He really does a good job of stopping ball reversal. They don't let you swing it side to side, which is really the easiest way to break up a defense. Mayberry entry pass for Miller, and Day picked up the loose ball and gets a foul draw. What a big basket by Todd Day. He finds the apple in his hands, and he delivers it. Gets a little gift. There's a little deflection. Now here comes Todd Day with the loose ball. He draws the contact, and he gets the deuce, and now goes to the free throw line. I was always teasing him. I said, you know, Mr. Day, you're going to make my old Bart Simpson team an underachiever because you only do it when the lights are on. Bart Simpson's in town for the Macy Day Parade tomorrow down here on Broadway. Grand Hill has fouled out. Mike Krzyzewski's freshman gone with 12 points, six rebounds, and he will not play the final 6-0-3. They'll have to call on Tony Lang. Tony Lang now gives him an athlete who can jump and play along the baseline, but he doesn't possess the perimeter skills of Grant Velvet Hill going to the sideline. 12 points tonight, averaging 11 a game. 
He's got the complete package. You can't teach some of the things he does. Great story about him. His dad was playing tennis with him one day. He was in the eighth grade getting ready to go to high school. And the football team was having double practices outside. It was about 95 degree weather. It was in Virginia. And his dad, Calvin, the former Dallas Cowboys star, said, son, next year you're going to be doing that. He said, uh-uh, dad, there is no way that I'm playing with those helmets on. I say salute that guy. He's intelligent. McCaffrey to Davis high post right side Tony Lang. That's how you break that trap. Postman I talked about earlier diagonal pass. Simple two moves. Postman diagonal man get the ball for the lane. Seven point game 540 to go as Lee Mayberry operates the Arkansas offense. So they love man to man defenses. Mayberry and Day it allows their one on one ability to really take over. Bowers over Leitner. Poor shot. And the follower falls in. Looks like Todd Day got it. Todd Day hanging around the offensive glass. He has 16 now. He'll end up with his 20, 25 before the night's over. And really did not have a good basketball game. Rocking foul, Lee Mayberry. And that will be his fourth. Thanksgiving football coming up for you on ESPN CFA style. The Mountaineers of West Virginia will visit the Gamecocks of South Carolina. That's at 8 o'clock Eastern time to fill out your holiday menu tomorrow. And don't forget, Friday night we'll be back here for the final of this, the championship game. The winner of this takes on the victor when Notre Dame plays Arizona a little while from now. Arizona number three in the nation preseason Notre Dame not rated in the top 25 they were considered number 40 by the Associated Press in terms of votes received preseason but remember this with Notre Dame and Digger Phelps Madison Square Garden the motion in the big game they really always seem to rise Digger's had a history for that he's had a number of games where he's won that big game over a number one team and last year he blew out Missouri 97 65 so his kids got good perimeter speed the big guy lafonso ellis on paper it looks like arizona but i'll tell you one thing the fighting irish was scrap and claw duke cannot get any closer than seven arkansas with 505 right now so they're going to try to spread the court now and take advantage of the one-on-one -on -one ability odd day the mayday gang says come on out and try and check us he said come on out and try and check us let me see if you can check me with the ball that's what Mr. Mayberry said. Come on out and check me. Come on, Billy. Shot clock under 20 now. Mayberry receives it from Day, but he was fouled well before the pass got there. Nice look by Todd Day because really he telegraphed that. But Mayberry did an excellent job of moving without the basketball. That's a lost art. So many kids compounded to the deck, but they really don't move well without it. Billy McCaffrey with his third foul. Now, unofficially, that's the ninth team foul of the half against Duke. Nope, it is number 10, so they do have two shots here. Mayberry with his 11th point of the night. He's averaging 19. Day is averaging 21, so that's 40 between them. Tonight, they've combined for 27. They put a real hurt on Vanderbilt in the first game and then really blew out Oklahoma. Oklahoma really limited in its front court. They got an excellent back court. Though. Yeah, Eddie Fogler says, thanks a lot. I win the NIT postseason. You send me to Fayetteville for my first <laughs> game. Grow up quickly. 4.35 to go. Arkansas by nine. See, if they swung the ball side to side, they would have had a layup yet inside position lately. He does a great job using his spin moves inside. Hurley. Ooh, nicely done. That's a two for Bobby. That's the first perimeter shot he gets hit tonight. Two for ten from the field. Tough to win, shooting 20% from your perimeter people. But again, Duke cannot get any closer than that seven-point spread. Every time you look up, another minute is gone from the clock. They want to get into an isolation, spread the court one-on-one, -on -one, try to check them. Duke allowing the shot clock to go down. It's down to 20. I sometimes think the college game should be a 30-second clock, all of the women's game. Men's game 45, the women's game 30. Look at Isaiah. He says, I'm the star tonight. Move over, Oliver Miller. Move over, Todd Day. It's my time to show with the Big Apple. Isaiah Morris. Isaiah Morris hits his 19th point of the night as Oliver Miller sits on the floor waiting to come in. Something symbolic about that. Look at Bowers. Look at him playing defense. Love it. You can see it in the stance like you do with Anderson Hunt down in Vegas. Well, where are the passing lanes right now? Todd Day steals. Down the court, bad pass. Brian Davis got it. Well, he was one second too late. 
He put his head to the deck rather than looking up. He had Uri for a layup. There's Leitner, went for the jam, and he was fouled. There's that spin move I was talking about. He catches the ball, and he spins and drop steps to the baseline. Number three on Todd Day. Watch Leighton now going to post inside. They're going to dump it down. Now watch the drop step to the baseline. There's the help coming over very late. You can grab the rim when you are being fouled. You can also grab the rim and not have a technical call if you're protecting yourself from injury or another player who you might come down on. Years ago, there was a controversial play where a technical was called. Henry Nichols, a Hall of Fame official, had to call it because the book said you call it. And it was a player who was laying down under the basket. It was during the ACC tournament. And he had to pull the technical and a player hanging on a rim trying to protect himself from hurting a player. Christian Leitner with that feel or rather free throw matches the 19 of Isaiah Morris who just set out. Leitner though only five points now in the second half. Timeout on the floor. 3.18 to go. Duke playing well but they can't get close to Arkansas. Semi-final game number one in the Dodge NIT on ESPN with 3.18 to go. It's Arkansas by seven. The story of this one from Madison Square Garden, Christian Leitner, big night, but again, only six points in the second half. A lot of boards. Grant Hill has gone on fouls. And the story for the Razorbacks, Isaiah Morris, a non-starter with 19 points, 10 rebounds off the bench. Duke's rotating into a trap right now. Let's see if Arkansas can handle the trap. They throw it over the top of the trap. Ron Yuri. Ron Yuri says no problem. Open on the wing. Oliver Miller was signaling for the high lob. It keeps going back to nine. Duke gets it back to seven. They may have to start hitting some threes here. Look out for Billy McCaffrey somewhere along the line or Bobby Hurley. But he just has not been able to hit tonight. Bowers from Miller. Crosses it. Day. Score. That's an NBA move right there. What a great move to the goal. One step, graceful and smooth. He looked like Secretariat winning the Kentucky Derby. He has 13 of his 18 since halftime. Leitner right by Miller. Forget it. I'll tell you what, Matt Dorr defense right there by Oliver Miller. He was dreaming about that pizza he's going to get after the game because he just blew right by him. He said, hey, get out of my way. We, Oliver, left hand. He's so smooth, Christian Leitner. But again, Arkansas by nine. Got to use a little clock with each possession, too, right here. Got to play intelligent with the basketball. They buried him, Miller. Leitner behind. Yuri coming down the paint, and he just kept it alive. Todd Day. Oliver Miller really likes to pass the ball. 15 on the shot clock. Inside, Yuri. Nice. And a foul. Nice cut with off the basketball by Ron Yuri. He spots the opening in the defense. He slashes through, catches the ball. They were a very unselfish team to raise about. Ryan Davis fouls out on this play. There's Yuri now cutting without the ball. He splits the seam of the defense, takes the ball to the goal, and they find the open man. I love, you know, that chant, looking at the Razorback fans, took some pictures with their beautiful cheerleaders and people before the game, and they have that chant, Pig Suey, they lay it on you three times. Woo, Pig Suey! Three, that's one of my favorite chants. I love another one down in Kansas. Rock, chalk, Jake, Hawk. And I love the chant at Austin P. Let's go P! Let's go P! As the Razorback cheerleaders. Austin P played in this tournament, fell in the first round to Arizona. A three-point play for Ron Yuri, 15 for him, and the Hogs have it by 12 with a minute 50 to go right now. They're staying in that trap now, that half-court trap. Leitner, down deep, forget it. Got around Mayberry. You see the quick drop step to the baseline. He executes that so well. He reads the defense, he reads the lane. Excellent drop step maneuver. Now, in televised games this year, each team only gets three timeouts. Each has used one. So Duke, uh, coming from behind, has a couple timeouts remaining and a bad foul by Arlen Bowers at the court. Well, he made two bad plays. He made the bad offensive play with the over-penetration and lost control, and then he doubled his error and frustra frustration and came and bumped it. Nolan looking at the bench. I don't know Arlen looking over. He said, don't take me out, coach. Come on. Don't Nolan's, take me out. Nolan saying, why are we stopping the clock with a 10-point lead? Caffrey for two. 
See, the one area that also with Duke in terms of the negative perimeter shooting the three. And in the era of shooting the three this year in college basketball, with teams I really believe are gearing up to let that three fly like East Tennessee State did against Arizona. I think that can be a problem, especially in a catch-up situation like right here. I mean, you chart the threes by Duke. How many threes have you seen? Not many. Maybe one by McCaffrey, one by Hurley is about it. Billy has 21. Home run pass for Day. He somehow caught it. They got away with that. Not really a good play. They tried to release to get the layup. They did get away with it. I'll back it out. Ron Urey with a steal. Minute 15 to go in the Hogs. Controlled by 10 with the ball now. Spread the court. Use the clock. Play intelligently. Head to the final. Enjoy Thanksgiving Day. The parade. Eat the big turkey. I say happy Thanksgiving to all the beautiful people out there in America. Not a good play right there. Thomas Hill. Leitner. And that's a three. Get the T.O. maybe. They got the timeout. Their second of the game. 28 for Christian Leitner. And now it's a seven-point game with 55 seconds to go. The ESPN weekend wraps up Sunday with NFL action starts at 11 or rather noon Eastern. Game day, Chris Berman and the crew preview all the games. They give you highlights of all the games at 7 Eastern with NFL Prime Time, followed by the Seahawks and the Chargers at 8 o'clock Sunday night. And nobody does it better than those people with game day and prime time. Their producers, directors, and Chris Berman is sensational. They are absolutely you know, number one. They can talk about any other. Hey, am I hyping it a lot? But I'm just telling you a fact. Well, I'll tell you one thing there's, you can't hype tonight. That's the Duke three-point shooting. They're one for six. We talked about it. They don't have real good three-point shooting. Arkansas calls in timeout because they can't get the ball inbounds. They use their second timeout. So each team with one remaining now in the last Here's how we're going to do it. That's what they did. He's a guy who's a confidence builder, but how much does he have to do now? Up by seven with the ball. 50 seconds to go. And a Bobby Hurley foul will be his fourth. No, if it's going to be on Leitner, it'll be his fourth. The winner of this game, and it's starting to look like the Hogs, will take on either number three-ranked Arizona, the Wildcats out of the Pac-10, or the independent Notre Dame. Bigger Phelps with a long history of upsets. And he loves playing in the Garden, where Notre Dame will be making nearly its 70th appearance in its history tonight. They've already been here 64 times throughout their history. Also, when you think about Digger Phelps, his day is struggling on that free throw line. And look at Mike Krzyzewski, Nolan Richardson. Digger Phelps, 20 years ago, it all began for him as the coach of Fordham when he had the place here rocking and rolling, beating Notre Dame. That's how you get the job. You beat him. Leitner all the way in. Offensive foul. And that's number five. Tough play right there. Christian Leighton with the good penetration. But an excellent job defensively of stepping into the driving lane. That's his fourth right there. Well, right there. Okay, the official gave the wrong signal to the table last time. That last one was on Bobby Hurley, so they each have four. See, right now they got to eat up some clock, Bobby. They got to really learn how to play with the clock. Especially when they're, they're going to blow a lot of people out this year, so they're not going to get the opportunity. Got to watch a five-second violation right there. Razorbacks by eight, putting it away here to advance to Friday night's final. They're going to enjoy tur Turkey Day. Now, you tell me that's not intentional, but I guess the art, that they say it right in the book, that you're playing the ball, Hurley going to the sidelines. Didn't have a Bob Hurley outstanding day like he did in the matchup last year against Arkansas, where he was just really brilliant. And, you know, he could have pressed a little bit here. He's back home. He wants to make the great impression. Fouled out, scored 10 points, but didn't shoot well from the field. He hates to lose. You talk about a kid that hates to lose. This guy has that burning inside desire of being just a born winner. He learned that from day one from his dad, who I could go on all day about. What a coach. You've never seen him coach. Let me tell you something. He used to pay me with a bologna sandwich and cheese on it to come and speak at his camp years ago. And I'd go down there and I'd leave and I'd say, this guy belongs in the big time arena. But he loves working with young kids. Bobby Hurley, 10 points, 2 of 11 from the field, 8 assists, no steals. They never were able to crank up the defense tonight. You watched this game early. It was a game of streaks. It looked like Duke was certainly in control early in the game, but Arkansas just kept plugging back with their great athletes. Kubek slipping down, and Arkansas has the ball, and the game is over right now, and it's the Razorbacks winning by 10, 98. You know what's so 
impressive. They win by 10, and if I had to rate them on a scale of 10 in performance tonight, you got to say a 7. They were not super to win by 10 here. They made a lot of errors. They made a lot of, I thought, not really solid decisions, but they made the greatest decision of all. They're going home as the Big A goes. They're going to the final, and they're going to get better and better. They are potentially a great team. One of three teams, I think, that on a neutral court has a chance against Vegas, along with Arizona and Michigan State. Chris Fowler is coming up in the studio in a few moments. For now, for Dick Vitale, Bob Carpenter, Arkansas by 10. The second half of our doubleheader is coming up.